We're so naturally gifted with the tools of open intelligence, with the, the capacity of open intelligence. And when we were repeatedly familiarized with a closed intelligence or you know, the term reified intelligence, which I was not familiar with the term reified prior to balanced view. And so that was really helpful to have a general term, but to also recognize that it's uh, anything that has been uh, abstract, taken to be substantial or real in and of itself. So believing that anyone or anything has a self-generated separate identity. That's a reified or closed intelligence. I mean, believing that we're in a skin line separate from one another and that we continually take in information and keep it inside this skin line to be able to make decisions. And so we, we simply get uh, exposed to this kind of, of education this subject-object orientation, this idea or belief that we're separate entities. And yet now we are in this glorious time of, of uh, scientific instrumentation in which we have proven scientifically that it is impossible for there to be any break or division anywhere, that everything is a seamless expanse of indivisibility. And, of course, the, the, the vibrancy of reality is evident as well. You know, the shimmering that you see right now and that you hear right now is the vibrancy and, and, and uh, aliveness of reality. And so it's totally apparent. But what has gone unacknowledged or unnoticed or ignored is our stable, totally indestructible open intelligence nature. And so repeatedly, again and again, we're asked to stop thinking just for a moment. And acknowledge the spacious, open alertness that's always on, always on. So previous to an education in open intelligence, most of us were attempting to find security, trying to find security in uh, people, places, or things. And trying to, let's say, uh, if you imagine the uh, grand scheme of a human life, there's the, the birth and then the education process, and in that, and, and death, right? So we, we see these different landmarks, but where did it all begin and end? We've never really asked ourselves this. And now we're opening up to, well, what's here right now and always here right now, no matter what the circumstance. So then we don't try to find security in a home, a house, apartment. We don't try to find security in a car. We don't try to find security in our parents. We don't try to find security in a partner. We don't try to find security in a child or in money or things because it's so clear that this is not a guaranteed security. It's never guaranteed. So this, this scampering around hoping to get or get rid of one of these people, places, or things to try to find security is what conventional life has been about without us even knowing we were scampering around simply adopting this education that we were uh, immersed in. And then we're open enough to then say, wow, there's another choice. You mean I can, I'm guaranteed security right here, right now in the very nature of my mind? I was never educated in that from, you know, day one. So now we are, and we have the opportunity to acknowledge a short moment. When we say, well, stop thinking for a moment, again, it's not to repeat that over and over and over again. 
It's just a tool initially to acknowledge the indivisibility of open intelligence, alert, spacious openness, and its dynamic display. Every experience exactly as it is. And so then we can enjoy the security, the stability that is pervading every single circumstance no matter what. Guaranteed. I was never given an education where there was a guarantee before. But I had to investigate for myself. So this is the opportunity we all have. Short moments, whenever we remember. Open intelligence and its dynamic display. We're not a, <clears throat> we're not a separate someone taking a short moment. The obviousness the alertness is a short moment. The obvious open intelligence always on. All pervasive, like the sky. And just like right now, everyone's in different states or countries. And there are currently on the planet state lines, nation lines, right? We've made up these lines. We've rearranged them over time before there weren't these lines. And then there's all these rules within all these, these countries. And then there's all these rules within these communities, within these states and countries. And then all these rules that, or ideas or beliefs within each family within these. So we can look, drill into the microcosm and then open it up to just how this little world is spinning with all of its dividing lines, when really you could stand on one state in the United States with one foot and then on another foot. Did anything change? No. Nothing changed. And when there's a weather pattern that blows through, are you going to say that, oh, it's only the weather's in this state and now it's different in this state? It doesn't have a different sky, right? There's no difference in the sky. If you take that nation line or state line and you go up with it, the sky doesn't divide. So you can take this analogy, the analogy of the sky, all of its dynamic weather patterns, and it's the same with our dynamic energy of, of thoughts, emotions, sensations. It's not something secluded within a skin line. It's open intelligence, vast and wide, inclusive of everything, all of its dynamic energy. We blow open the idea of lines and borders. And it seems so obvious when we talk about state lines and nation lines, but it's the same with our body, it's the same. We can take an instrument up to anybody's skin line and it's vibrating particles in space. So where's the dividing line? There is none. We made it up. Yet we are totally vibrant and shimmering like a mirage. Light and sound shimmering so fast. But if we take ourselves to be separate and apart from one another, that's how it'll seem. It'll just seem that way. And then we won't have the opportunity to recognize that our mind is vast like the sky and inclusive of everything. And if if this is acknowledged, the obviousness of this is acknowledged, then we have access to all information all the time. Now, a couple days ago, someone shared with me that there's research in, uh, now with technology that they, they want to start practicing putting chips in people's heads so that then we can be on the Internet all the time and actually experience that we're all connected. And I actually got all excited because I thought, wow, now we're metaphorically starting to match what we actually already, what it, we already are, but we don't need a chip. We're already indivisible and open and pervasively interconnected, like always on internet. Already, we don't need a chip. So all of us are pioneering the instinctive realization of this. And every short moment of the inseparability of open intelligence and its dynamic shimmer, indivisible, vast and inclusive of everyone and everything, 
we're empowering this complete shift for all of humanity because our indivisibility of intelligence being acknowledged is making it more accessible for everyone and it quickens the obviousness for everyone in our indivisibility. So this is such an exciting time. It's such an exciting time. And uh, so this, this not only serves the obviousness of reality, but what it really comes down to is moment-by-moment moment benefit, where we can simply know moment-by-moment moment what's needed in every single time, place, and circumstance. Every single moment. And I, I love the, the creativity of this because prior to Balanced View, I would have thought I was a pretty open-minded, creative person. But it really opened me to realize where I still was holding up in beliefs, principal belief systems, principal belief systems about, about time, about dimension, about subject and object, about uh, mm, what, what we're capable of. You know, and that every short moment blows every single belief and assumption out of the water. It blows our mind into the open mind of open intelligence. And our capacity then is, is unlimited, unlimited with solutions. So now the difference for me in solution orientation is, is, is the stability the security and stability of open intelligence and the openness of open intelligence provides for the ability to adapt moment by moment. So the stability and adaptability that continue to be more and more obvious. Uh, even today, I thought one of the, um, the activities on my to-do list, you know, really needed to get done today and, and, and then it didn't get done. I'm like, wow, well, okay, I'm going to have to just do it at midnight. And I, and, I, and I thought, well, we'll see what else opens up there. And all of a sudden, a new solution. But before, I would have only seen the first solution, then completely committed to that, got it done, and not seen another option. So what opens up in every circumstance is options, that maybe haven't been thought of ever before, or that uh, tools that we've been, that we're familiar with, or that we learned. And so our ability to listen, to ask for help, to know who to ask for help, uh, and the ability to know when to say, I don't know, and just simply maintain openness for the solution, it's so much fun. <laughs> Whereas before it would have been, you know, nerve-wracking. But now there's complete trust in open intelligence that already holds all the solutions and just enjoying when that will be apparent. Complete confidence in open intelligence. Not as a separate someone with intelligence, but our interoperable intelligence that's pervading all of us equally. Everyone with the same power and access to the same equal intelligence, just like the sky pervades every shade of blue equally. It pervades every weather pattern and every world equally. So we're all empowered equally. It's a matter of being educated in tapping our ultimate, stable, secure resource, our very mind right here, right now, alert and ready. And so not only do our, let's say, uh, personal solutions arise, but also our deep care for all beings having everything they need. If we're so caught up in what we need, what we want, what we want to get rid of, what we need to change, you know, that, is, that, that energy getting poured into that kind of activity is exhausting, first of all. But that's, again, how we were trained. So then there's that introduction, that reminder, oh, short moment, open intelligence, vast, open, inclusive of all solutions. And the ease and spontaneity of beneficial responsiveness opens up to making sure that everyone has all the food, water, clothing, shelter that they need. But it really takes all of us to 
acknowledge who we really are. And then, and then we really see one another collaborating in a way that is empowering, not only empowering, but enjoying one another, enjoying our incredible talents, enjoying seeing it exhibited. And so, yeah, it's, it's fantastic to see shifts come about where many countries around the world are, are giving you know, rights to people for um, health care and for who they want to love or marry. All these, these things are coming up right now in society. But ultimately, our ultimate right, our most prioritized right that we really need to take responsibility for is how we use our mind. And this is what is brought up again and again and again in Balanced View because it is absolutely crucial. We all need to stand up and take responsibility that we are powerful by nature. And every short moment is contributing to this shift in humanity, to the the peace that is sought is right here, right now, in the current circumstance. Isn't it amazing allowing anger to be as it is? The very essence of anger is complete peace and well-being, complete stability, the same alert, wide-open clarity is the essence of every dynamic display. So we allow anger to be as it is, and what what do we see? Beneficial responsiveness, complete altruistic responsiveness. So the the heart warmth that we are empowered in every circumstance, that nothing can alter our beneficial nature, who wouldn't want to investigate short moments? Somebody who's a skeptic, that's okay. The pioneers who are willing and are, and are open are humble enough to receive such a gift are going to implement short moments and make it easier for those who actually see the benefits in our lives, the practical benefits, and seeing all of us thrive together in, in the most incredible ways and in the most practical ways. So it's, it's a total joy sharing this life with all of you and having the gift of the trainer, all of the resources, the entire network of the global community in short moments as our four mainstays of open intelligence. And the four mainstays of reified intelligence start evaporating like mist because we take responsibility for who we really are. Moment by moment.